you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Gallows Pole by Led Zeppelin, which was the winner of my Facebook request fest the other day. And you can even watch a uh, live stream of me transcribing this tune if you're interested to see a little bit about, about the process. I should point out this song is usually played on a 12 string guitar, but frankly, I just got my 12 string out and the strings are really old and I don't have time today to take all the strings off, clean it all and, and, and do a 12 string guitar, string change and tuning and all that. It's a bit of a flaff. So uh, we're going for it just on the regular six string, but if you want to play it on a 12 string, it's exactly the same chords, finger and everything. It just feels slightly different under the fingers. Otherwise, it's essentially the same. And I assume, I'm kind of figuring most of you that are learning this tune are going to be doing it on a six string anyway. So uh, the arrangement's a little bit kind of complex on this. So it's not particularly difficult, but there's like where the sections go would be much more difficult for me to try and explain the counts to you rather than you listening to the original recording. So I'm going to give you the puzzle pieces, but you've got to put the puzzle yourself, together yourself by listening to the original recording. OK, I think that's by far the best way to be doing it anyway. So let's start off by having a look at the fretting hand. So we're starting off here with an A7 chord. So second finger, second fret, fourth string. Uh, third finger, second fret on the second string. We're not playing the thicker string. Okay, make sure you can hear that open G string ringing out there. I know with an A7 often you can play it with whatever fingers you like, but in this particular version you want to be using those middle two fingers for reasons that are going to become more than apparent in just a second. So we're going to play... You can see there just second finger lifting off for one strum. Then first finger's going down in the sec uh, first fret of the second string. Then we've got this little motion where we're going to strum this chord. It'll slide up two frets, okay? So second finger in the fourth fret, first finger in the third fret. And then little finger's going to go down on the fifth fret of the thinner string. much it. Now let's get stuck into the rhythm. So there you have the fretting hand, but for most people it's usually the rhythm of this kind of tune that they find the hardest thing. So what we're going to do is break it down and look at it a couple of different ways and make sure that you find a way that it's comfortable for you to play it. Now a really good idea with this kind of song is to be able to play it without worrying about the chords at all. So just using your fretting hand fingers to just mute all of the strings on the neck so you get a nice little click there. Uh, that way we can concentrate on making sure that you get the rhythm right and that your hand's moving consistently. So the rhythm pattern here, and I'll do it real slowly, um, is going to be this. So three, four, one, and a two, and a three, e, and a four, e, and a one, and a two, and a three, e, and a four, e, and a. Okay, so beat one and two are the same. It's just one, and a two, and a. That's down, down, up, down, down, up. Beat three is three, e, and a. Okay, so the first down strum and the last strum in that little group of four sixteenth notes. Three, E, and A. Uh. Notice that the hand's moving. Three, E, and A. Uh. Then beat four is the two upstrokes, which would be the E and the A. Uh. So four, E, and A. Uh. Four, E, and A. Uh. Real slowly again. Three, E, and A. Uh. Four, E. Here we go. One, and A, uh, two, and A, uh, three. 3, E, and A, 4, E, and A, 1, and A, 2, and A, 3, E, and A, 4, E, and A, 1, and A, 2, and A, 3, E, and A, 4, E, and A, 1, and A, 2, and A, 3, E, and A, 4, E, and A, 1, and A, 2, 3, E, and A, 4, E, and A, 1, and Okay, now you probably won't be wanting to speed up that quickly. So you want to get it right, really like, kind of comfortable and slow and just relaxed and be able to do it and then very gradually start to speed that up. If you work on the rhythm separately and then add the chords in, the rhythm is kind of more important. If the chords get a little bit fluffy and the rhythm stays solid, you'll be all right. Okay, it's much better than the other way around, whether you get the chords right, but the rhythm goes wonky. Everyone notices if you do that, right? So 
Let's now apply it now with the other hand so we can see how those two things are, are going to work together. The lift of the third finger is just on the upstroke in the last upstroke in beat one. So one and a. Okay? One and a two and a three. So the a after beat one is where we lift the third finger off, then it goes back down, and on beat three we're changing to the minor seven, the A minor seven. One and a two and a three e and a four e and a. Okay, and on beat four we've got this e and a. So on the e, the second sixteenth note of beat four, four e and a. We've got this pick, slide, and then the up pick on the last sixteenth note, four e and a. Okay, we don't need to strum on the and. You, can, you could do and it wouldn't make anything go drastically wrong or anything, but I'm pretty sure that you get the right feel of it if you go for E and R, for E and R. Let's try putting that together real slow. So three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a E and a Oh, I should mention as well, beat one, if we're putting it all together, is just a playing the bass note, not a big full strum. So beat one each time, just trying to target the fifth string with your down pick, okay? So one and a two and a three E and a four E and a one and a two and a three E and a four E and a one and a two. Now, in the real world, there's a little bit more than that. There's going to be some extra strums that come in, and as you kind of relax into it, that's okay. That what we're after here is kind of like a foundation thing. You know, even the very first uh, time that it's played on the record, uh, you don't hear that little fingered note there at the fifth fret. Um, now, whether it's he, he missed it or he chose not to play it or whatever, it doesn't matter. The rhythm stays consistent and the, it's in time, so it doesn't really matter if you put an extra strum in or one of the notes doesn't ring out or whatever. It really, it really doesn't make any difference, right? So don't, don't stress about it. Now, uh, so getting the riff together real nice and slow, getting confident, getting relaxed, making it feel good, and then gradually trying to work it up to the original tempo is a really good idea. Um, there's the next section after it plays it a, a bunch of times for the intro and then for the verse. Then there's a G. G. I tend to play for this song the full four finger, what I normally call as a rock G. Okay, so second finger, third fret, thicker string, first finger, second fret, fifth string, open middle two strings, third finger, third fret, second string, little finger, third fret on the thinner string. Okay, just makes it real nice and easy to change to the D again. Just noticed again, I've done my, I, on the G chord, I very rarely put my first finger down. I, you, you probably should when you play a G, right? But for me, that, that B note kind of tends to muddy things up a bit in the, in the low end. On a 12 string, it'd actually be quite nice probably because it's got that uh, doubled thin string there. But I tend, maybe it's just a bad habit, right? You shouldn't copy it. Uh, we've got down, down, up, down, down, up. But the second down, up, the... They're just kind of, they're more rhythmic. It's da, 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 da. We're after that rhythm, so. It's that down, da, da, down. They're not muted, but they're just a little bit lighter. They're, they're as much for the kind of the rhythmic vibe as anything else. Um, within that first verse, again, listen to it. A really good idea is to play really quietly while you're playing along with the original one, so you'll recognize, oh, it's something they played something different to what I did. So, you know, if you play too loud over the original recording, you won't hear what the, what's going on, on the, what Jimmy's doing, and, and therefore you're probably going to miss out on some, some good stuff. So the rhythm after that riff is slightly different. It's one and two e and three e and a four e and a. So the second half of the bar is exactly the same, just the very first half, one and two e and okay the little where the, where you lift your finger off has changed place to the second sixteenth note of beat two one and two e and three e and a four e and a one and two e and 
down, down, up, down, down, up. All the rest is the same. So from the G, one and a two and a one. It's just important. It just happens in that uh, that little bar after it's gone G D. And then it's straight back into the regular riff after that. Um, it goes through the second verse. Then uh, there's another G and a D thing. A couple of times, I think, if I remember rightly. And then we're into the next section, um, which is this. It starts to get a little bit more uh, full on with the with the rhythms and stuff. Um, rhythm for the for the most of the chord parts fairly straight. This down down up down down up down down up down down up pattern that we talked about a little bit for the G. You know that pattern is a, a fairly consistent thing in this tune. The chords for that section are A, G, D, G, A, D, G. Slight variation with the strumming there on the G. That uh, just up to that point again. So A, G, D, G, A, D, G. And on the G it's three and four E and up. Down, down, down just on the bass string, down on the chord, down on the bass string, up, down, up. Really common kind of a sequences again. Bass, chord, bass, up, down, up, bass, chord. Okay, that whole section again. A, G, D, G, A, D, G. A, G, D, G, G, D. And then we're into a new section, okay? So a G D G A D G da ka da ka A G D G G D. Okay, so it stays on the G there. It might throw some of you off that you have to stay on that same chord there, where it kind of feels like it's going to change and it doesn't. And then we're into this up. <laughs> Big deal here is that kind of, it's, it's quite aggressively played 16th note strumming. Da -ka -da -ka. Okay, it's basically you're holding down an A chord with your first finger doing a little kind of a mini bar version. And the basic riff, if I take away all of the kind of excess strumming, is. First, second finger playing the note G, which is the third fret of the thicker string. Chord, so just the bass note. Chord, bass, chord, click, click, bass. Now that little, it's one of those things, it's kind of in the mix, there's a couple of guitars going on, I'm not really sure exactly how it's being done, that's what, that's my best guess, but you know, the, the real Led Zeppelin freaks might crucify me and say that it's not exactly right. M more often than not, on the live versions and stuff, he doesn't seem to do it. It doesn't happen, but it, I'm sure I can hear that on the original recording. Um, more commonly, if you wanted a kind of a simplified version, Just down, 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 three E and a four E, one and two and three E and a four E and a. Just remembering that all of those fingers, two, three, and four, all sitting on the strings here. Quite often, even on the first pass, particularly as it goes on, because from this point on, it's a little bit more kind of improvisy to me. Um, the sections are not quite as defined, and there's a little bit more kind of vibey things going on where they're just the band interplaying off each other and stuff. So, um, but there is a bit of that where you're actually strumming sixteenth notes, even though it's you going. So 
so you are actually getting do do da da do do da da. If, it, if you really listen slowly, it still just sounds to be like. Again, slowing it down, you hear that. It's usually when there's the do da, it's G to D, but occasionally, well, actually, I think it might only be once, it goes C to D. C, D. And, you know, again, you got to listen to it to find that little spot. It should be pretty obvious because it's the one time that the chords are, are different to uh, the other times on, on that kind of a riff. Um, and as far as that, that whole section from here on in, it's, it's, it's a lot more vibey, a lot more strummy. There's a lot more lines going on. You hear a lot more of uh, John Paul Jones playing the mandolin part, doing the do-da-da-da-da-da-da-da in the bass lines. It's a fantastic uh, arrangement there of this song. Um, and it's, you know, it is an arrangement of an old song, in case you didn't realise it's not a Led Zeppelin original. So uh, it's something that you can uh, experiment with and make up your own version. You don't feel like this has to be uh, exactly the uh, same same as that they played it, although I'm trying to give you about as much of that as I can. Um, I do feel like I can hear little sections in there going... But it might just be me hearing it on the six string instead of the, uh, you know, because I didn't get the 12 string out. But if you do do that, I'm just putting, uh, I'm playing the open A string, the fifth string, first finger in the seventh fret of the fourth string, little finger in the ninth fret of the uh, third string. You know, again, it's an arrangement you can, you know, feel free to play about with it yourselves anyway. So uh, look, I really hope you, that this uh, is enough to get you those puzzle pieces and you can go and put them together. It's a great tune, really fun one to play as well. Um, it is a little bit about getting the arrangement right and being, especially if you're playing it with other people, this kind of tune, you need to be following the singer a little bit. So be ready for them to go, oh, they're on the gallows pole, and, you know, when you're gonna have to jump to the G. That kind of thing, if you're in a jam situation, is fairly important. Um, so look, I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, you'll join me for some more re uh, Facebook request fests where I just say like it's open request and then I look at what the most popular ones are. If there's something I really don't dig, I probably won't do it. So it's not like I am going to do that one. But, you know, most times it seems when I do it there. Yeah, uh, songs that I quite fancy doing anyway myself, like this one. So, do remember I've got more than a thousand free lessons now over on justinguitar.com. There's sure to be lots of other tunes that you're going to dig if you go and have a look around over there. And do subscribe to my channel if you dig what I do. I really appreciate your support. I'll see you plenty more very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.